There is an issue that has united the travel industry. This tax is a disgrace. An issue that is threatening relations between the UK and the Caribbean. And has started to significantly damage the UK-Caribbean relationship. An issue that is damaging UK businesses and the Caribbean economy. It has had a detrimental effect on British business. It's had a detrimental effect on the Caribbean. It's an unfair tax and it needs to be taken away. The Caribbean is made up of around 7,000 islands, islets and keys across over 30 countries and territories. Over 23 million tourists visit the region every year. The Caribbean is such a beautiful place. Um, it's warm, the people are lovely. It's a very easy, easy life. The weather is so good, the people are so friendly, um, and I love the water sports, and I'll be here again in September. Both my parents were born in St Lucia. I'm all my family from St Lucia, so um, I go back on a regular basis. The Caribbean is more tourism dependent than any other region in the world. In some Caribbean countries, tourism revenue represents over 30% of gross domestic product. Tourism is the lifeblood of the Caribbean economy. This is all we have. Um, for every one person that's employed in the tourism industry, they have four to six dependents. So it shows the spread of that tourist dollar that has to feed a lot of people. Um, so for 12,000 people employed, we're talking maybe 60,000 in total with a dependent. 1.9 million people across the region are in jobs related to tourism. That's one in every nine jobs. Tourism is a major part of what goes on in the Caribbean and um, if you're not getting the tourists out there then you know things are going to disintegrate in the Caribbean as well. And the Caribbean travel and tourism market is under threat. In 1994, the UK government introduced a departure tax on flights called Air Passenger Duty, known as APD. Well, when it started, which I think was 1993 or thereabouts, um, I described it as a, a nice little earner in the sense that it was a relatively uh, harmless tax. Uh, you know, why not? The government was needing to raise money. And it didn't really have any noticeable impact upon people's desire to travel or their ability to travel. But since the year 2000, the UK government has increased APD by 400%. This is because it's easy to administer and very lucrative. From April 2010 to March 2011, this tax raised £2.2 billion in revenue. This tax is a disgrace. The former CEO of British Airways, Willie Walsh, strongly opposes the tax. He's been dubbed the Caribbean Crusader. When APD to the Caribbean went up from £120 for a family of four to £200, for a family of four, arrivals from Britain have fallen by 12% and by as much as 25% on some islands. London-based Newmont Travel specialises in flights to the Caribbean. We realise that there has to be a tax, um, but we just feel that it, it, it shouldn't be quite as much as it is, and certainly in, in respect to the Caribbean, uh, the Caribbean shouldn't be any more than it is to travel to the US. In 2009, the UK government revised the air passenger duty to introduce a four-tier green banding system. These bands are based on a number of miles from London to a country's capital city. Band A is 0 to 2,000 miles. Band B is at 2,001 to 4,000 miles. Washington DC falls just inside this band, allowing the entire US to be considered band B, including Hawaii even though it's over 7,000 miles away. The next band, C, is for capital cities 4,001 to 6,000 miles away. All Caribbean territories fall within this band, including Antigua, whose capital, St. John's, is actually only slightly further away from London than Washington, D.C. Band D is over 6,000 miles. So even though a flight from London to Antigua at just over 4,000 miles is taxed in band C, a flight from London to Hawaii at over 7,000 miles is taxed at band B. 
This is why the APD has been called a tax against tourism. The crucial anomaly is that America is in a particular band because its capital city happens to be on the East Coast. And but what that means in practice is you pay more in APD to travel to the Caribbean than you do to travel to Florida or Hawaii. So it's not the APD in principle I think is unfair, it's a system of banding. APD affects the Caribbean in a very significant way. First of all, it places us at a competitive disadvantage to a number of our competitors because of the category or band in which the Caribbean has been placed. And most fundamentally, it affects the Caribbean because it increases the price of a Caribbean tourism product. And every time you increase the cost of our product, you clearly affect the demand. The Caribbean Tourism Organization represents 33 governments and a range of private sector companies. They are the Tourism Development Agency for the Caribbean. The CTO has been working feverishly to sensitize the British public and the Caribbean public on the impact of APD on Caribbean economies. The current advocacy and lobbying campaign against APD began under the previous chairman and continues under the current administration. Today, the CTO are holding a press conference to raise awareness about the APD across the Caribbean. The tax, as we know, discriminates against the Caribbean as well as Caribbean people living in the United Kingdom. So if you believe... I think that went quite well. The questions were quite pointed and, and we were able to get the message out about APD. I think CTO's role and effectiveness in in, in our advocacy efforts on behalf of APD um, well, are not as well known in the Caribbean as they are in the UK. Members of the CTO have come together at Caribbean Marketplace to discuss issues that affect the Caribbean. One of the key issues is APD. Caribbean Marketplace is organized by the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. It happens every year and it provides a forum for buyers and sellers to get together. I think the worst thing that ever happened for the Caribbean and for Jamaica and certainly for the attractions industry is this tax. If we are to be successful in Barbados, the UK is our largest market. Um, almost 40% of our passengers or tourists come from the UK. Um, it simply will have a devastating effect on our country. This tax will do nothing more than to harm not just our tourism industry, but the smallest man on the street. I think it affects families the most. You know, if you add those taxes on one person after another, it's really going to, we're going to lose a lot of business and I think it's sad. Arrivals out of the US dropped by 3.5% in 2009, but in 2010 they increased overall 1.6%. Arrivals out of Canada increased by more than 12.2% since 2008. Arrivals out of the UK to the Caribbean have been decreasing steadily since 2008. The introduction of a revised APD banding has further and negatively affected the return of tourists to the region. Tourism is now down 14.9%. This is over 190,000 fewer people not visiting the region. And as a result, Caribbean tourism agencies have been compelled to increase their marketing and PR budgets. Our fear, though, is that if the British government, if it is accepted that APD is OK, then what will stop the Italian government, the German government, the French government, and the US government from adding an airline passenger duty? So we're not in favor of any sort of airline passenger duty at all. The cost of access is a very important part. We in the Bahamas, for example, have found that that is the most important factor that affects travel. That after people have the desire and they have the intent, et cetera, et cetera, if your cost of access is substantially higher, then they start looking at other places. I think our energies ultimately still have to be focused on trying to get a fair form of taxation of life that we could see numbers going up once again. In the case of Jamaica, uh, a reduction in uh, the arrivals of 10%, of for example means 50 million pounds less revenue for a country that needs foreign exchange. It is incumbent on leaders in the Caribbean, both in the public and private sector, to continue to have a very focused watch in brief on what steps, if any, the British government takes. This really is a tax against tourism. 
is a tax um, against integration and education, and it must be seen as such. And this is, the Caribbean just happens to be highlighting it because we're going to be the most impacted, um, but everywhere it's going to be impacted. It is early March 2011, a week before the UK budget is announced. The Honourable Ricky Skerritt and Hugh Riley are in London lobbying MPs. They are on their way to a House of Lords reception. I just wondered if any of the actual uh, key decision makers from the Treasury or Transport would be there. Chances are that they will want to stay away at this point. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. The UK Chancellor of the Exchequer will announce his budget on the 23rd of March and the CTO are hoping that the APD will be reviewed. MP Lord Fawkes is president of the Caribbean Business Council. I think I've seen uh, people in the Caribbean, ministers and uh, members of parliament others and others, steamed up about this more than anything else and I can understand why. But it's not just people in the Caribbean. The tourist industry in the United Kingdom are very unhappy about it. Tourism is vitally important for most of the Caribbean islands, but it's also one of the five main industries of the United Kingdom. So to have a, an unfair tax uh, in that industry has caused great uh, annoyance and great distress. APTA, the Travel Association, represents travel agencies throughout the UK. With over 5,900 members, they ensure high standards of trading practice for the industry at large. The CTO and APTA are working together to lobby against the APD. APTA has been working with the uh, CTO for quite some time now. There's a real commonality of interest between us as representing travel agents and tour operators taking people to the Caribbean and the Caribbean itself coming together and really mobilising the diaspora in the UK to make the case to their local MPs who in turn make the case to government as to what the effect of their passenger duty is has been really important. We've been fortunate in being able to pull together um, an APD coordinating committee drawn from the diaspora organisations from the various uh, uh, groups within the UK. Uh, I think the committee is now representative of all the diaspora communities from the Caribbean region. One of the uh, more interesting developments uh, as the APD lobby uh, has moved forward is a recognition on the part of many British parliamentarians that the Caribbean diaspora uh, actually have a vote and that vote can make a difference in marginal constituencies. The Bexley African Caribbean Community Association, known as BACA, are typical of one of the Caribbean diaspora groups in the UK lobbying against the APD. Jeff Jilks is chairman of the APD Coordinating Committee. He has travelled down to attend the community's AGM to talk about the progress of the ongoing lobbying effort. MPs in constituencies are not going to have their constituents rising against them because whenever it comes to a by-election, what's going to happen? They're going to be out the door. MPs are there to represent the interests of their constituencies. It's got to be fought. You can't lie down and watch it just go 75, 95, 105, etc. Yes? I mean, it may still happen, but let's be there to register our objection to it. The Caribbean diaspora, the one thing they need to do is, is get off their seats, get involved in this. We're, we're very good at, at talking about things that not being right uh, and we're in a position where we can do something about this and the more people that get involved, the more pressure we can put on the government and, and the lower we can keep these taxes. This is our first visit to Barbados and we want to come back and if they keep increasing just these charges, you know, the extra tax charges, then it will put us off because we want to spend the money when we get here. We don't want to give it to the English government. We want to spend it here on the island. They're coming, but they're restricting themselves and they're not going out to restaurants so much. They're not going on boat trips. They're, they, they can't afford it. This is my eighth visit, uh, and I do love it here, but if the tax goes up more, then I will possibly look at perhaps to Europe or North Africa. Uh, where I can get uh, more holiday for my money than I would do here. It is an unfair tax. It is an unfair tax. And we need something positive to be done. And the quicker and the sooner the better for us.
other European uh, governments have also got departure taxes. Um, ours, unfortunately, work out three to four times higher than most of the others. Very soon people will have to think twice if they can go down for a holiday. The APD for premium economy is charged at the same rate as first class. If you buy a little bit extra legroom on any flight in the premium economy class, you'll be paying a small premium on the price of your ticket for those extra couple of inches of legroom actually on the plane. But in terms of taxation, the Treasury treats it as if you're buying a first class ticket. And so for those extra two inches, you're paying double the amount of air passenger duty. Now, the effect of this is effectively to wipe out that class of travel on every single uh, carrier. My staff, senior executives, are no longer travelling in premium economy, but travelling in economy, because air passenger duty for premium economy, which is only a slightly bigger seat, but with economy service, is now so expensive that we're now forced to fly in economy, so that they no longer get the tax for that. The second thing is, and this is more important, We've now got local executives that are now travelling to the Caribbean but using the European hubs. So rather than having to come all the way to London to take a flight to Antigua or St Lucia, they can fly from their local airport out to Schiphol and go from Schiphol straight into St Martin. So actually, it's had a huge detrimental effect on the Exchequer. They're getting less money. Hugh Riley meets with Luke Pollard to discuss ABTA's lobbying effort. They've taken out a full-page ad in UK press. This is quite impressive. So on here we've got... Um, 24 different organisations, we're now up to 34 that have joined the Fair Tax of Flying campaign. I mean, the range of organisations that have joined this campaign is fantastic. So you've got everyone from you know, carriers like BA and Virgin all the way down to all the, uh, all the charters, Thomas Cook, TUI and Monarch. And so in terms of, uh, in terms of a wide representation here, you've yeah. got airports, tour operators, airlines and destinations. So really trying to show that actually this isn't just special pleading on behalf of a group that doesn't like being taxed. Right. This is the whole supply chain, the whole customer journey experience, um, showing that air passenger duty is having a real big impact on, on their business. APTA is clearly a membership organisation, as CTO is, and they're clearly supportive of, of the effort of the Caribbean, as we are of many of the tactics that they have taken yes. to support this issue. On March 23, 2011, the Chancellor of the Exchequer announced that he will postpone the increase in APD until April 2012 and review the banding system. I don't think it will be completely scrapped. Um, there's an old saying that there's only two things that are guaranteed in life. Uh, one of them is that you're going to die at the end of it, the second is that you're going to pay taxes through it. The Labour government did it as well as the present coalition uh, government. Uh, see it as a, a way of bringing in money. Uh, which can appear to be less painful without realising uh, how really harmful it is, uh, both on the tourist industry of the United Kingdom, but also uh, on the very fragile economies of the Caribbean countries where tourism is such an important uh, industry. I used to have a full head of hair before APD came, but as you can see, uh, it's taken its toll. It is having a, an impact and it will continue to have an impact because you know people just can't afford to go out to the Caribbean anymore. Um, it's costing more and more each year. We want to reduce the tax and get it taken away altogether. It has had a detrimental effect on British business. It's had a detrimental effect on the Caribbean. We can prove it. It's statistically shown that we are now reducing our income because of air passenger duty. So, with APD frozen until next year, the question remains, what is the long-term outlook for tourist destinations like the Caribbean? And can the region depend on the support of its historic relations with Europe? I do think the uh, UK has particular responsibilities towards uh, our Caribbean partners, uh, because this is a Commonwealth thing. This is, this is my uh, take on all of this, that we should be thinking of this in Commonwealth terms. Uh, I believe the Commonwealth is a very important institution with a great potential uh, for spreading peace and light, if you like, throughout the world, spreading over three continents, as it, uh, five continents as it does, and therefore yeah, we should be looking at it from the point of view that these are our friends. And uh, it, it's quite clear that the way the tax is structured at the moment is playing very unfairly uh, on the Caribbean countries. A lot of Caribbean politicians still bask in the notion that Britain has some moral responsibility and moral concern for the Caribbean. Unfortunately, we left that behind a long time ago. In the 35 years that I've been working with the Caribbean on political and economic issues, 
uh, I have never come across an issue that has so unified the Caribbean on the one hand and on the other hand has started to significantly damage the UK-Caribbean relationship um, in, in a number of ways which I think is actually making some Caribbean governments think seriously about what their long-term relationship is with Britain. We're in a place where um, the future of the Caribbean has been decided and determined for generations. So we're going back to the Houses of, of Parliament in the United Kingdom to talk about issues that are important to the future and the livelihood of the people of the Caribbean. We will undertake uh, Plan A, B or C depending on what, what happens. But essentially we will do whatever we need to do to keep the pressure, strengthen the awareness of how much APD is hurting the Caribbean.